together to make today possible. That includes Daphne Rackney from our DIT department, uh, Matt, Matthew Bartlett, I don't see Matthew from Innovation, Rashad Taylor, who really has been the champion and the lead on this, and I know he's somewhere in the background from One Atlanta, he's hiding. Um, Keith Whitney from Communications, Roosevelt Council and the entire finance team, Susan Garrett, who's not here today in procurement, and please forgive me if I've missed any others, and I do want to call out the names of our council colleagues. Marcy Overstreet, who sponsored this legislation on behalf of the administration. Thank you so much, Council Member Overstreet. Matt Westmoreland, our Council President, Felicia Moore. Also, Amir Faroki, Howard Shook, Andre Dickens, Jennifer Ide, and Natalyn Archibong. I hope I didn't miss anyone. As I was speaking with Rashad, Rashad Taylor this morning, he often reminds me that the best disinfected is sunlight. And that is what Open Checkbook is all about. You will now have two years worth of data, financial data from the city of Atlanta, totaling $2.1 billion in spending that will be available for you to review online, over 104,000 individual transactions. Open to the public now, at your fingertips from your laptop, from your smartphone, will be information from FY17 and FY18. This is a significant day in the life of the city of Atlanta. We received so many questions about our spending and rather than waiting for the public to ask or waiting for the media to ask, we are now making it available to you. And so Richard Cox, our COO, is going to go through a demonstration of Open Checkbook. But I just want to, again, thank our team. The past several months have been a very difficult time in the life of the city of Atlanta, especially for our more than 8,000 employees who come to work each and every day, not looking for accolades, not looking for recognition, doing an honest job for an honest living. And the past eight months have really um, tested the patience of not just our employees, but also our residents. So I sincerely hope that with Open Checkbook, the public will be reminded of our administration's commitment to transparency. And I just want to remind everyone again we created a vision statement at the beginning of our administration. And that vision statement is for One Atlanta, an affordable, resilient, and equitable Atlanta, a safe and welcoming city, a city with world-class employees, infrastructure, and services, an ethical, transparent, and fiscally responsible government, thriving neighborhoods, communities, and businesses, and residents who are equipped for success. With the launch of Open Checkbook, we are certainly honoring our commitment to be an ethical, transparent, and fiscally responsible government. And we are one step closer to realizing our dream of being one Atlanta. With that, Richard, I ask that you come forward. Thank you, Mayor Bottoms, for your continued leadership, vision, and commitment to transparency across the city of Atlanta. Today, indeed, launches a new era of both transparency and efficiency. We're transforming how the public, media, and government accesses, reviews, and uses spending data across the city. Ultimately, this should improve competition for city contracts, help agencies improve tracking, and near and dear to my heart, help us control spending. Since announcing Open Checkbook in April, Many departments have been working to ensure a successful launch. As the mayor mentioned, I want to call out the finance department, our IT department, our procurement department, and Rashad and One Atlanta. The portal will begin with fiscal years 2017 and 2018, and moving forward, we'll add new data on a quarterly basis. The launch of Open Checkbook will empower our residents to hold government accountable and allow them to see exactly how their tax dollars are being spent. 
The checkbook meets the transparency standards put forth by the U.S. Public Interest Research Group. Also important, our open checkbook is truly a one-stop shop for spending information. It's both all-encompassing and user-friendly. The portal has one-click functionality and makes complex financial data easy to understand and can be accessed on multiple devices. Now, let's take a look. If you take a look at the screen to my right, you'll see total spending, including over time, allowing you to take a historical view of data as well as historical averages. Next you'll see expenditures by top department, top vendor, and top expense category. It allows you to search each category, department, vendor, and even each expenditure, which allows you to drill down at a very granular level, as you can see. We can also search. So as an example, if we search Atlanta Journal Constitution, I figured a few of you would appreciate that. It'll show total spend across the city and show checkbook level transactions to this particular vendor. Finally, any user can download to Excel or PDF any data they'd like to find on the shop. That being said, I'm going to turn it over to Mayor Bobbins. Um, below $50,000. Is there any information that will be available because of the cyber attack? There is no information, as I understand, that will not be available because of the cyber attack, but there is certain information that will not be posted, including information such as garnishments, and there were a few other items. I'm going to flip through my notes here so I can tell you exactly what won't be available. Um, but everything that we... Thank you. Internal bank wire transfers, payrolls related deductions such as garnishments, jail bonds, court bonds, uh, charges related to victim and witness programming, fees, subdivision plan review, tra traffic fines imposed for a GSP motorcycle unit, fees, rezoning petitions, unclaimed wages, and workers' compensation are, um, would be the only information that's not available. Well, so much of this is just related to how we wish to operate as an administration. And what we learned over the course of the year um, during our campaign was that people were interested in a more transparent government. And so this is something that we talked about very early on in the administration, really before this federal investigation um, took an uptick. So it was something that we were planning on doing anyway. But certainly with the federal investigation, there was a sense of urgency uh, to make sure that this information is available. We receive hundreds upon hundreds of open records requests um, each month. And hopefully this will help the media as well be able to look at information, receive information. And what I just want to remind people, this is a new portal for us. So we don't want to set expectations of perfection. Um, I'm sure as with any new program that's rolled out, it may be necessary for us to do some tweaking, um, but this is a significant start and hopefully it will work seamlessly. So you will actually be able to track it when it's posted quarterly. So that information will be available as any other expenditures are available 
quarterly, uh, but we have actually discussed as recently as this morning some tweaks to our credit card legislation to make that issue, uh, make those credit card statements more readily available to the public. You'll be able to see, uh, well, Rashad, I'm going to let you um, answer that question, if you don't mind, in terms of our credit card expenses and those statements. Um, so uh, you won't be able to see the credit card individual transactions because the way the finance department does it is we make a one-time payment to Bank of America for the lump sum of all of our cards. Uh, so that would take a whole different... <clears throat> operation separate from open checkbook. What you will be able to see are employee travel charges that are charged to the one card that's associated with Concur, uh, but you won't be able to see of the 18 credit cards that are across the administration, the individual transactions. Do you plan on adding years I believe the information that we had readily available was FY17 and FY18, but it's certainly something that we can look at, I mean, again, this is a start. And so if we are able to upload prior information, um, and Roosevelt Council, our CFO, is saying it is possible for us to do that. So I would say yes, that we will upload that information. But again, going back to our credit card statements, we are having some discussions internally about uploading those credit card statements in a way that it's more readily available. I know that we're even getting open records requests in those statements before we receive the statements. So I know that that information is made available to the media, but we will certainly um, work to make sure that that information is more readily available to the public. I think that's something that we'll have to discuss with our DIT department. I don't know if it will be an additional link on here specifically for credit card statements, but we know that that's, some, that's information that the public is interested in having. So we will certainly work to make sure that that is also available. You know, I'm, I'm very careful not to look back, and we are focused on looking forward. And this is part of looking forward to make sure that we have information that's readily available to the public and to the extent that there are issues and we can catch them in real time and we aren't waiting two years or three years to receive a subpoena to find out that something has been done inappropriately. There have been so many initiatives that have come out of our administration towards being more transparent. I think this is probably the biggest and most public one. Um, again, this is about people seeing how our tax dollars are being spent and being able to hold our government accountable. But we have credit card legislation pending before the city council, also legislation regarding the chief transparency officer. We've had discussions regarding that that we have placed before city council. There have been so many initiatives regarding ethics and transparency that it really, we almost lost count because we rolled out so many. And what I hope is that even in your coverage today, that this receives as much attention as some of the negative stories that have been received. That this is something that's unprecedented in the city of Atlanta and uh, the, the likes of it have never been done by this by our government so to have this information readily available online um, I don't know that there is any bigger signal that we can send and our COO just passed me a note that said the portal is actually available now so you can begin looking today and the link is checkbook.atlantaga.gov checkbook.atlantaga.gov